Hello and welcome back to World Turtles. I've been quite busy the last few months getting the trailer and demo polished and published, but today I'm back with another game devlog. We'll be looking at how to incorporate roads into the game. It's a lot more complex than just connecting hexes with roads, especially when placing buildings onto the existing road network comes into play. But let's start at point A and work our way through the path to point B. At the highest level, roads are actually just about connecting point A to point B. The most basic functionality we need is finding a path between the points, often the shortest path, as defined by some cost. Now we already have the A star algorithm applied to our hexes, so that's easy at this point. However, by this time, the map already contains a few interesting developments. First off, we have the elevation differences, which causes terraces and cliffs. In Catlike Coding's original tutorial, he uses terraces for an elevation difference of 1 and cliffs for more than 1. Also, units are only allowed to walk up and down one elevation difference, and not up and down cliffs. In my application, this turned out to be a bit too limiting in terms of the viable paths available to units, and thus roads. I've changed this to a 2 elevation difference a while ago. However, the triangulation still used cliffs for a 2 elevation difference. This could lead to visual confusion, as the player would not be able to tell at a glance whether a cliff was a passable 2 elevation difference cliff, or an impassable 3 or more difference cliff. I wanted to remedy that, so that the player knows all terraces are passable, while all cliffs aren't. It was easy enough to just triangulate the sloping part of 2 level differences as terraces. But the difficulty came in with the connections between neighboring hexes of different elevation levels. Each set of three neighboring hexes are connected by a triangle, with each edge being either flat, terraced or a cliff. Previously, at most two of the edges could be terraced, since when this happened, the third edge had to be either flat or a cliff. Now, a connecting triangle can have three terraced sides. I had to cater for this functionality by breaking the final quad of the triangulation into 5 quads that follow the contours of the extra terrace and flows onto the quad below. The case where the connecting triangle had two terraces and a cliff as sides also had to be adjusted to connect all terraces properly. And since the number of terraces is parameterized, you can actually select how many you'd like to triangulate. With the elevation sorted, the next factor is that while our roads still go from the center of one hex to the center of the next, we have made our pathfinding more granular by working with the segments of the hexes, so the units can visit different areas of a hex. So to know whether a road from a starting hex to a neighboring target hex is viable, we actually need to test the viability of a path from the center of the starting hex to the segment on the starting hex in the direction of the proposed road, then from that segment to the neighboring segment on the target X, and from that segment onto the center of the target X. If any of these connections are blocked by, for example, an impossible resource in the way, the road should not be allowed. So a road will not be allowed to pass through rock. However, for now, we make an exception in the case of trees, where the tree will be removed if you want a road to pass through. All of these specifics need to be built into the search algorithm using input parameters. That wasn't too difficult to accomplish, but the hardest part is yet to come. I would like the player to be able to see the future path from the building to the Founder's Hex should a building be constructed at the chosen location. However, the construction of the building potentially adjusts the elevations of the hexes it is constructed on. This means you cannot use the current elevations to search for a path. These elevation adjustments depend on each building's floor plan. To make it more difficult, each building can be placed in one of six different directions on each hex. So it's clear that we need a generic methodology that works for any specified floor plan and direction situation, or keeping track of all the possibilities would be a nightmare. Luckily, we already have the optimized placement of buildings working in terms of which directions are allowed for the map's elevation differences and allowed adjustments. Check out the link in the top right for a detailed video on that part of the puzzle. What we need to do now is add the road network information to this, 
and include all of it into one optimization method to find out which directions are plausible and which of these directions lead to the least amount of work, not only for constructing the building, but also the required roads to connect it to the rest of the network. We include the road information within the model itself, indicating which hexes allow roads and which hex is the pivot point for that building's road. When creating the UI element to place buildings, we save this information in the background. Now, whenever a location is tested for placement, we check the required elevation adjustments like before. But we add something extra to the test. First, we apply the elevation adjustments temporarily so that we know what the map will look like after construction. Next, we map the acceptable roads information to the map given the rotation of the building and check whether a road can be found to the founder's hex. The length of this road is added to the cost of the elevation adjustments so that the optimization methodology would prefer to work a bit harder on the groundwork if it means a much shorter road can be constructed. We perform this test for all six directions and pick the direction with the cheapest combined elevation and road cost as the optimal rotation. Finally, we include in this test whether any of the hexes that already contain a road or has a road ordered to be built coincides with the hexes on the floor plan that allows roads or forms part of the shortest path to the founder's hex. All of this is then indicated to the player with green, yellow and red inner highlights showing the cost of the building construction as before and white outlines showing where roads would go. The elevation and road information of the hexes are then returned to what they were before so that this UI process does not influence the real pathing and unit movement of what's already on the map. All that remains is to actually order the builders to construct the roads. There's a bit of checking for neighboring roads and connecting to them under special circumstances involved, but all in all it's not that difficult to just add a new type of task to the builders and adding the roads as they complete them. We've had the placeholder for roads in the building UI for a while anyway, and a few quick additions to the automated task system handles the rest. And now we can clearly see before deciding on our building locations how it will eventually impact on the map when roads are added. We can also see that both completed and ordered roads of the existing network are preferred and that we can place buildings over these as long as the floor plans align with the existing network. This is important since we don't want the player to place a building in such a way that a viable road to it cannot be constructed when the time comes. Further down the line, I'd like to add road upgrades as the MEEPs progress, and we also still need to cater for being able to construct bridges over rivers, but let's save that for a future video. We will also need to add some effects that the road have on the game, other than units traveling along them. But for now, our road building system is generic, will work for whatever floor plan we specify in the building model, and adds a lot of visual value to our realm as it progresses. Please subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with my own progress on the game. Goodbye!